In this video, I'm going to show you how to use calculus to prove that the area of a circle is a is equal to pi r squared. There's a formula that allows you to find the area under any curve. So let's say we have this curve or this function, and we're interested in finding the area under this curve from a to b on the x-axis. So that formula is a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now we draw our circle and we want to prove that the area of this circle is a is equal to pi r squared. So what is the formula of a circle? Well, it is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, where r is the radius. So we need to solve for y. We have y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. If you consider only the plus sign, then you have this function. That's our curve. But if you consider only the negative side, then you have this. Here's how our proof will go. We will find the area of this part. So let's call the area of this part B. We can see that the circle is symmetric. So the total area, the total area of the circle is 4 times B. Because we just need to find the area of this and then add it all together and then that will give us the total area. Now what is the area of B? That's going to be the integral from 0 to R, so from 0 to R, of f of x dx. So f of x is going to be the positive square root of r square minus x square dx. And why is it the positive square root of r square minus x square and not the negative side? Well, that's because we're trying to find the area under this part. And this is the positive side of the circle. Let's solve for b. And as you can see, this integral requires trigonometric substitution. And we know that this is equal to f at r minus f at 0 according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, where f of x will be the antiderivative. So we have the integral of r squared minus x squared dx. And what form do we have? Looking at our three forms for trigonometric substitution, we can see that our form matches this one. So a squared is equal to r squared, so this is the a squared part, which means a is equal to r, and x would be equal to a times sine, so that would be r sine. The next step is to find the derivative, so dx over d theta. What is the derivative of r sine? That's going to be r cosine which means that dx is equal to r times cosine d theta. So f of x is equal to the integral of r square minus x square, and x is r sine theta times dx, and dx is r cosine d theta. This is equal to the integral of r square minus r square sine squared r cosine d theta and we can also factor out the r square so we have the square root of r square times 1 minus sine squared r cosine d theta so one of our trigonometric identities from high school says that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 which means that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared which is basically this part right here. What is the square root of r square cosine square? It's just going to be r cosine times r cosine. And we end up with r square cosine squared. We know that cosine squared is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 plus cosine of 2x. So we have r squared times 1 over 2 times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, e theta. And just for fun, the other formula, which is sine squared, that's equal to 1 over 2 times 1 minus cosine of 2x. Here r is a constant, so we should move this outside of the integral as well as the 1 over 2. So we have r squared over 2 times the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta d e theta. This is equal to r squared over 2 times the integral of 1 d theta plus the integral of cosine 
2 theta d theta. What is the antiderivative of 1 d theta? It's just going to be theta. And what is the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta? Let's u equal to 2 theta. So du over d theta, the derivative will be equal to 2. So du is 2 d theta, and d theta is 1 over 2 times du. So we have the integral of cosine of u, and d theta is 1 over 2 du. We move 1 over 2 to the front, and this will give us 1 over 2 times sine of u plus c, where u is 2 theta. So this is equal to r squared over 2 times theta plus r squared over 4 times sine of 2 theta plus c. We can simplify sine of 2 theta. So there's a formula sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x cosine of x. And since this is theta, we have to use theta. So we have r squared over 2 of theta plus r squared over 4 times 2 sine theta cosine theta plus c. The 2 with the 4 will cancel out, so we have r squared over 2 times theta plus r squared over 2 sine of theta cosine of theta plus c. This is where our initial assumption x is equal to r times sine common. So from this, we know that sine of theta is equal to x over r. We have the Sokatoa rule. And this means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So x is the opposite side and r is the hypotenuse. We need to find this side. Let's call this b. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, we know that b squared plus x squared is equal to r squared. So b squared is r squared minus x squared, and b is equal to positive square root of r squared minus x squared. And why is it positive square root, not plus and minus the square root? Well, that's because the side of a triangle is always positive. So we know what sine is. We know that sine is x over r. How about cosine? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is r squared minus x squared, and the hypotenuse is r. r squared will cancel out with the 2r in the denominator. So we have r squared over 2 times theta, and we'll convert theta in a second, plus x over 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared plus c. So what is theta? Well, x is equal to r times sine theta, so sine is equal to x over r, which means that theta is arc sine of x over r. The next step is to find f at r and f at 0, so we can find what b is. f at r is equal to r squared over 2 times arc sine of r over r. So we just replaced x with r. And r over r is 1. Plus r over 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared, which is r squared. We have r squared over 2 times arc sine of 1. And what is arc sine of 1? That is going to be pi over 2 plus r over 2 and r squared minus r squared is 0 so this is times 0 so this is equal to pi r squared over 4. We found out what f at r is. What is f at 0? f at 0 is equal to r squared over 2 times arc sine of 0 over r which is basically 0 plus 0 over 2 times the square root of r squared minus 0. So we know that this here is a 0. This is equal to r squared over 2 times arc sine of 0, which is 0. So f at 0 will be equal to 0. This means that b is equal to this, which is pi r squared over 4. Remember, b is the area of this part. We said that a or the total area of the circle is equal to 4 times b. That gives us 4 times i r squared over 4, which is i r squared. And this is the proof for the area of a circle.